giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now. FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to We the North Recap. Today, this week, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the elephant in the room. We'll recap the events that happened and give some previews for next week. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Dan. I'm Chris. I'm Lenny. I'm Soe. And I'm Martin. All right. And before we go on this week, I have to give a shout out to my mom, who made this full First Updates Now bag for me for competition. So thank you. Thank you, mom. Big ups to her. Round of applause. Ooh, All right. Dan's mom. Thank you. Mama Thank you. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on to our topic. So nothing really controversial happened this week, right, guys? Nothing. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Absolutely no, not. No, so, no yellow let's... elephants. No. Yeah. No. Over nothing. The so, no red elephants either. Yeah. No. No. Nothing. Yeah. So like, let let's talk about some Hab Three climbers. We're seeing a lot of teams who just can climb make it high up in the ranks and they definitely you know they contribute to the alliance but you definitely notice that there are some better teams but they're just getting lowered down because they can't climb what do you guys think about that? all right so i think everyone knows where i stand on this topic i hate them <laughs> they rank high and don't contribute to elimination alliances and that's where i stand um in all honesty though like it's 12 points um but if you're spending a minute to get up there uh every match what are you really contributing to the alliance can you be contributing in the ways of defense over there so it's actually going to be interesting to see how these teams do um as we approach district champs and champs what do you guys think will happen with the role of these only have three climbers yeah i think have three climbers they're going to have a, a tougher time in the elimination just trying to get through further with i think some of the, the lower end picks having a stronger first spot I don't know if they're going to be able to pick up a stronger, you know, second pot for their with their first pick. Uh, that'll top some of the other teams, and there might be some decl declinations from, you know, those teams not wanting to join another team that can't climb. Let me step yeah. in as the uh, as uh, the odd man out here. I think that half three climbers are extremely important. I feel like having those guaranteed twelve points at the very end um, is definitely a difference maker. I can talk about that as a personal our did not have any have three climbers and it was really hard to make up that difference especially with tremendous defense that were being played during eliminations i mean it's definitely you know the climb is definitely useful i think the bigger thing is some a team that just climbs you know if their opr is like 15 to 20 you know they're basically climbing and scoring maybe two balls and how beneficial to the alliance is that compared to you know other teams how fast and, can you score 12 points? I mean, with no defense, I'm saying hot take right here. I don't think you need to have three climb to get to hot Einstein. Take. I Ooh. think if you have three level one or maybe even just one level two, I think you can get to Einstein because if it takes you, if it takes another team like 30 seconds to climb, you can score nine, you can score nine points in that time without defense on you. It'll be, it could be hard. I think with the right division and the right alliance, it could definitely happen. I think the problem actually comes in finding places to score. We're seeing um, uh, we're seeing where teams just don't have places to score just because the field is filling up so much, like on the cargo ship especially. You might see the null hatches coming off and stuff. So we'll see how that goes on. Um, anyways, we're going to move into our recap. So the first event we're going to recap is the North Bay event. So this event had some of the lesser-known strong interior teams competing. So 49, 46, 46, 78, and 49, 17. So against the odds, 13, 10, who could actually only cycle level one uh, stuff, 
uh, but did have a half through climber seated first and pick 4678, the Cyber Cavs. Uh, the number two lines captain playing on home turf, team 1305, Ice Cube, seated first and pick 4917, Sir Lancer Blot. Number one played number two in finals with both alliances getting there with 2 0 sweeps through quarters and semis. In their first quarterfinal, match though the number two alliance showed off their double level two climb and they did it multiple times during eliminations this all but sealed the deal for the number two alliance who missed the double climb in finals two and three and winning three just on penalty points but it's the first time we've seen consistent level two climbs um in ontario and it's actually a really cool way they do it so you see it on screen right now uh 49 17 goes up with their stilt mechanism lifts their stilts on the platform, and then 1305 just wedges under there. So it'll be interesting to see other teams adopting that because that's actually quite a common climb strategy. So 1305 won the Chairman's Award at this event for the millionth time ever. So congratulations to them on that gold, gold climbing. We're going to move on to the Windsor-Essex Great Lakes event. This event was quite quiet in terms of big-name teams attending, but was definitely not quiet in terms of the number of D20 yellow cards assigned. I personally counted 17. We're not going to open that can of worms, though. This event features Ontario's first ever double climb in qualification match 50, where 58.85, a slow but very consistent half through climber, got on the half and used their existing hat mechanism to tip their robot on its side. And you see 28.52 with their brand new half through climber, Yay Districts, climbed up next to them with the match ending in a tie. So I thought that was pretty crazy. Uh, this event was pretty straightforward. 11-14 seated first, picked the next best robot, 1285, and won. That's it. 11-14 <laughs> um, thrilled the spectators all weekend with their fast scoring machine and their wicked fast half through climb, leaving it to the last second on quite a few occasions. You'll see them get there right as the buzzer finishes, and it's probably my favorite half through climb this season. It's really fun to watch. Now we're going to move on uh, to the North Star Regional. You want to take that? Yes, the Minnesota North Star Regional. It was a very well-run event. I was there. It was, it was a good time with my team. Um, it was a tough competition out there, 60 teams total showing up. And uh, we even had teams from China and Turkey there. Um, after all the qualifications had finished, 33-13 uh, Mechatronics had taken that top spot um, going 9-0, though 18-16, the Green Machine, with their climb, they went 7-2 and two and were able to take that seventh or the second seed spot. Um, from 2175, the Fighting Calculators, who also had a 9 0 record. So those extra climb points are definitely coming into play here. And there was not a single completed rocket at this competition. Um, in the alliance selection, the Fighting Cal Calculators actually declined the invitation for Mechatronics. Um, so that was kind of a little shakeup. Um, so in the quarterfinals, the top seed Mechatronics, along with 3042 and 5626, would be upset by the eighth seed. 64, 87, 22, 27, and 31, 30. Unfortunately, the AC with that set, with that upset in the quarters wouldn't be able to get it past in in uh, the semifinals, uh, getting some really dumb, really dumb. Uh, uh, wow, words are escaping me. Uh, penalty points uh, for crossing two robots on the other side. Um, and the final match, it was the four seed versus the first seed. And uh, both teams were playing defense with Swerve Drive bots, which is actually kind of cool to see. Um, the four seed needed to bring it to a, a third match in the second round, um, but unfortunately, 39 26 while attempting to climb to level three, uh, tipped over, weren't able to get those final climb points, which would have had them win that match. Uh, but it turned out to be 77 to 68. Also, congrats to team 28 83 on winning chairmans and blinging the golden, golden silver cling bling. And 59.93 on the Engineering Inspiration Award. And now, that will just go right across the street to the, the 10,000 Lakes Regional presented by the Mentronic Foundation. <sighs> well, that's way too long of a name. Um, but there were 63, the, 63 teams there. Um, no teams going undefeated. Someone always lost. Um, but in the end, 51.72, the Gators were able to secure that top seed with a record of 8-1, their first pick. It was a pretty easy picking up 2052 the Nightcrawlers and finishing out the alliance with 3026 Orange Crush. Um, the final matches would see the first seed versus the third seed, 3102, 4607, and 3184 battling it out. 
um, with some hard-hitting defense in the second final match. Um, it virtually wouldn't be enough for that third seed to stop the crazy scoring of the first seed. They were just there were two bots that could score like crazy, and you weren't going to stop either one of them. Um, so the power powerhouse that was seed one kind of rolled through the entire competition and uh, took that victory there. Uh, congratulations to 2,500 on their chairman's win and 2,502 on the engineering inspiration. Uh, Minnesota's got great double regionals going on. It's never disappointing and some great matches. Let's move on over to the next event. All right, so I pick it up. Um, <clears throat> we had an event here in Indiana, uh, the Center Grove District event sponsored by Toyota. Um, and really just going into the event, it was... Was 7457 Super Duper Robotics able to repeat what they did just the previous weekend and take it home again? Not only, again, guys, a rookie team, and my I add, only full of freshmen and sophomores, not only the captain their alliance, they were the number one seeded team after it was all said and done, made it straight to the fuzz. So my team was the eighth seed. We played against the number one seed, and and I'm going to tell you, I, we tried our hardest playing some really hard defense against a rookie team out of all the teams we played defense on. And it just did not slow them down. They just, just handle it like champs. And just the poise that they have as a rookie team is just something I've never seen before. And, and they deserve all the kudos that I'm giving them right now because they've, they've analyzed this game correctly. They built the right bot for this game as a rookie team, and they're excelling. I can't, can't say enough things about that team. So um, quick shout-outs. We have the uh, obviously the uh, the winners, the number one seed, A68 Tech Counts, um, 7457 Super Duper Robotics, and also the first ever blue banner by 1741. They have countless chairmen's won, but the first event win. Great, great shout out to that um, amazing team. Um, also, chairmen's goes to Cyber Blue 234 and EI, well deserved for 4926 Galactic. That's all I got, guys. On to the next one. Ye ye. All right, let's go on to Wisconsin. So I had no idea what to expect when going into Wisconsin, but that's what really made it so thrilling. There were just so many different teams that were all like at similar levels, and so it could have gone so many different ways. Uh, team 930, McGuanago, that's probably going to be the last time I have to say it, hopefully. McGuanago Bears, thank you, thank you, had done great at their prior events, and they definitely earned their first seed position. Uh, they picked up 1732 Hilltoppers and 2169 King Tech, and it looked like they had an amazing alliance. But the 4th C had something to say about, about all that. 3197 Hexhounds were doing okay, but their partners, 7498 Wingus and Dingus, and 2077 Laser Robotics were amazing. I don't know how 2077 snuck through to the second round. It's a mystery to me. They were, they were doing phenomenal. And 7498, they have no chill when it comes to defense. Their driver, he might be one of the best drivers I've seen in FRC. How he's able to do those really quick, you know, drops into the cargo bay. And they are just, he knows exactly when to go turn on the defense, when to go back for stretch, when to go back to actually score. It's, it's amazing. So they, uh, they managed to defeat the first seed alliance, which was a really amazing, you know, it was a really amazing upset considering 7498 is rookie. And 3197, they were struggling to have three climb consistently. So each each match came down to three points or less in the semifinals. So on to the finals, meeting them in the finals was the second seed alliance of 6574, Fair Dermis, 1259, Paradigm Shift, and 1091, Oriole Assault. The first two matches came down to fouls, but in the third, it was anyone's game. 1091 was given 7498 a taste of their own medicine when it came to defense. However, all the bashing was taking its toll, and during the match, we saw two robots dead at some at one point, and a wheel fell off and was on the field. It was pretty brutal. But the second seed managed to win out, and shout out to them, and 5125, Hawks on the Horizon for grabbing chairmen, and 2202, Beast for getting EI. Let's move on over to Buckeye. Buckeye was a event, I guess. In the I guess we'll in the years past, there's a lot more team diversity, but this year it was only five teams, not from either New York or, or Ohio. So that was you know kind of strange. I assume you know more districts starting to cut into those regionals, but 
And there were yellow cards being handed out like hotcakes, but I won't get into that at this time. At the end of the qualifications, 379, the RoboCats were first seed, and they opted to pick 3641, the Flying Toasters, and 3138, Innovators Robotics. When left to their devices, they were gaining some great scores, but coming to the semifinals, the fourth seed of 4028, the five Warbots, they came to compete. In the end, they upsetted the first seed alliance in just two matches, and I attribute a lot of that victory to 4145 playing some amazing defense. And on to the finals, the seventh seed of 3003, Tan of X, 5667, Digital Eagles, and 120, Cleveland's team managed to upset the second seed with only a single foul making the difference each match. In the end, the fourth seed was just too much. 4028 played amazingly, and their hatch game is incredible. 48 managed some solid cargo, and 4145 kept up their defense. They won in two matches, so shout out to them, and shout out for the Ohio sweep with 5667, Digital Eagles getting a silver, glo- silver gold cling bling with their chairman's win. Bling bling! And 6964, Bearbots, for getting the EI. Congrats to them, and hopefully it makes up for living in Ohio. Now, on to our top 10. All right, so for our top 10, we have number one, Team 1114. No surprises there. Number two, Team 5172, the Gators. Number three, 7457. 1305 with their wicked turreted elevator. We have 48. 1285, the Big Bang, which can actually, they can only score on the low levels. Um, 868, 610, Crescent Coyotes, 1747, and 4917, hashtag Green Milk. Now let's, we're uh, let's talk about these real quick, guys. What are there Any surprises that we have on here or any shout outs you guys want to give real quick? Can we talk about the Green Milk for a second? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no idea what that's about. What? It, if anyone was watching what? the stream at uh, North Face, so there's a 49.17 sign that had something else on the other side, but on the back of it said green milk. So, yeah, it sounds like Cana- This sounds like Canadian propaganda. I'm not okay. Every with one of their robots <laughs> has had green in the name. So they embrace that, huh. the green. I mean, all right, that's fair. I mean, <laughs> I'm glad 51.72 managed to get the. You know, managed to be number two because I feel like they got robbed a few weeks back, and they definitely deserve that. Ranking. Yeah, they were they were going crazy. Um, Again, another shout out. Real good. To my uh, rookies in Indiana, seventy four fifty seven super duper robotics, just killing it. Number three on the list, first time Rookie on it. Hype? Yep. So now so, on to previews. Well, I just want to give a quick shout out to sixty one zero. I think that's their team name. Six one zero. Uh, some Canadian team. I haven't heard of them. They they seem to do pretty well at their last regional. So congrats to them. All right, let's move on now. I'm All done. right. So our previews. Uh, so we have the McMaster University event coming up. This has some great known Canadian teams. We have twelve forty one, thirteen twenty five, twenty fifty six, twenty two hundred. Who is actually going to be the first time they're competing since week one? And they just showed up week one and were the best robot at the event and cleaned house with 610. So it's going to be really interesting to see what they managed to do uh, in week six. We have 5406 Celtex, and then we also have the York Everybot winners in 6140. So shout out to them. I'm interested to see how they'll do. Let's move on to Quebec. Martin, you want to take that? Yeah, so I'll be talking about Quebec. Je vais pas faire le preview en français comme à la semaine 1 pour Montréal. Euh, mais je m'assurerai de, de tout dire au moins. Euh, so, at the Festival de Robotique de Québec, we'll have six countries, uh, meaning six national anthems. So, uh, of course, we have Canadian and American teams, but we also have 3510 Prepatec Tektronik from Mexico. And from Turkey, we have 6431 Nocta Parantes. Uh, from Brazil, 5800 Magic Island Robotics. And Australia, we have 4613 Barker Redbacks. Talking about 4613, they'd be one team to watch as they already have two regional behind them. And they also won the Southern Cross Regional. Uh, they were consistent through both events with an OPR around 30. And they also have that two robot climb that will be very dangerous at the regional. Um, another team to watch is, of course, 3360 Hyperion. They were very good at the Montreal Regional. But um, they, even though with all the defense they had, um, they had some kind of troubles with their third level climb brew as they did not uh, achieve it every time. But I'm sure with all the time they had, um, they, they should have found a solution to that and will make them a more dangerous team at uh, for the Quebec Regional. 
Uh, also, we have 3986. Uh, it's more a surprise for them, uh, the Montreal Regional, because uh, they weren't really known as a good team, but they were very dominant. Um, and they really stood out. Uh, they won the event, of course, uh, with uh, their robot that would almost fill the rockets and would climb on the third level platform. And uh, more teams that we that I like to to show out are teams uh, 55 uh, 28 Ultim with the robot Coloss that won the 28 uh, the 2017 uh, uh, Montreal event and were finalists for the 2018 Montreal event. Also, uh, 3386 that uh, were uh, the winners of the 2017 Montreal uh, Regional with their robot uh, Xenomorph this year, and they went to semifinals also to Montreal this year with our team. Um, other teams to watch, uh, local teams, uh, 5910 Supertronics and uh, 5618 PLS that haven't played yet, but always uh, have a good run in the playoffs, and uh, that's it for me. Cool. All right. I think, Dan, you got seven rivers real quick here. And, of course, I'm muted. Of course. All right. <laughs> seven rivers. Let's do this. I was wondering, like, you know, I can introduce myself, Chris, but you don't need to. And then, was, all right. Yep. Yeah. All right. So seven rivers is going to be a pretty fun event. Titanium is going to be back there again, which will be great. Uh, they haven't managed to win an event yet. So hopefully this one, third time's the charm. Uh, competing against them, though, we're going to have 2481 The Roboteers, and they put on a show at Central Illinois, so I'm hoping for good things from them again. Uh, if you like 1091 playing defense at uh, Buckeye? No, uh, Wisconsin. No, I'm getting them mixed up. <laughs> it was Wisconsin, thank you. If you like them playing defense at Wisconsin, you're going to love them here because they're back again. Uh, we also have Wildstang, winners of the Midwest Regional. Definitely, they've had some time to improve, so I... I'm looking for, at good things from them. Uh, and then just quick shout out, Wave. I do love them. We'll see how they do. All right. Lenny, wrap it up. Oh, oh iPhone alarms again. Oh, <laughs> thank you for two weeks in a row. Two weeks <laughs> in a row. Thank you to everyone that's watched. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask, we should let us others know about the show. And this is a place to go for more FRC in their lives. If you have a few bucks to share, we'd appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are delighted. To to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Dan, Soy, Chris, and our producer, Nick, I would like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Best of the West. Talk to you next week on We the North Recap. Bye. So long. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.